Uh, my name is Tom Wallace. I'm Acting Assistant Chief with the Winnipeg Fire Paramedic Service. We just wanted to update yourselves and the public on the planning measures that we've been taking uh, with respect to our capacity to respond to uh, the unlikely case of an Ebola virus disease patient in Winnipeg. Our planning for this began late August of 2014, and as early as the second week of September, we had a specialty crew equipped and trained to respond to a potential EVD case in Winnipeg. Since then, we've been building capacity within the department as well as with our partners in the WRHA, Public Health Agency of Canada, infectious disease experts, uh, so that we could have a more robust response. Um, and that planning culminated uh, last Thursday with the commencement of screening for potential EVD patients in the communication center. So when a, a citizen calls 911, uh, they'll be asked specific questions depending on their complaint uh, about travel history and specific symptoms that might um, raise a flag that it could be a potential Ebola virus patient. In that case, we've got a specific response with crews that have been trained and equipped uh, to respond to that uh, type of patient and the risks that are inherent there. Um, we want to highlight the fact that uh, the well-being and safety of our members is uh, the, of the utmost importance to us, uh, which is why we've been putting so much planning into this and working closely with our partners. Uh, Dr. Gerson can speak more specifically to some of the details of the response. Just to further what Tom said, the screening questions that are occurring at our 911 communication center involve uh, symptom complaints that would be consistent with Ebola and they're the same kind of questions that are being asked to the triage, triage desks and the clinics, not only province-wide but uh, probably countrywide. And then once those questions have been answered, there's also a, a screening questions regarding travel history and exposure history if there's they've been traveling themselves or had in contact with someone who's been traveling to any of the endemic areas. So the, the questions that we're doing ahead of time at the 911 call center is virtually the same as the screening that's happening across the country. The, the threat's low. Um, it, initial numbers that we were provide, provided by public health were a 5% chance in the U.S. and a 1% chance in Canada. We've seen already that there's been a case in the U.S. as well as a transmission within the U.S. Um, so even though the, the risks are low, we're taking them seriously, uh, because it's the well-being of not only our members, but the citizens of Winnipeg. If I could just make a comment about the risk of exposure. Um, really, the way we approach an Ebola incident is very much like a hazmat incident, where the first and foremost is to ensure provider safety. So when we're educating these teams, we're advising them that you, know, you have to take precautions for yourself. And so the idea being that the response that we've identified with these specialty teams and the medical supervisor as a supervisor watching the donning and doffing of the personal protective equipment, that is all designed to minimize the exposure to the personnel. And then the, the response itself is modified so that we're getting the best trained people we can on scene as quickly as possible, but minimizing the number of individuals that might come in contact with that potential patient. So we're providing the highest level of care we can while minimizing the exposure to the number of providers. And if I can go further, uh, in addition to the specialty teams, uh, we're undergoing uh, orientation sessions for all of our licensed medical personnel within the department. Which would be how many? Uh, it's approximately 600. A term that's come up a lot in, a, in our teleconferences is an overabundance of precaution. I've got no problems with that. The goal is to limit the number of personnel involved in patient contact and patient care. Uh, so to that end, uh, the crews that will be responding to a patient who's been flagged and dispatched as a potential EBD case um, will be strictly from the ambulance. So it'll be one ambulance with two paramedics and one medical supervisor. So that's three individuals who would potentially have contact with that patient.